Hey Coral, Danny here, and today I'm with my friend Gord. Today we are going to be doing a hanging pot rack. Here are the materials you're going to need for this project. We've also listed them below. To make our DIY hanging pot rack, we need three cuts of wood. At 24 inches, 15 inches, and 12 inches. We also mitered the edges of the 15 and 24 inches because yes. they are the frame and that'll give it a nice clean look. Um, we didn't miter these because these are gonna be the internal ribs, so they don't need to be mitered. If you need help making a miter cut, we've actually covered this in another video and I've listed it in the description box below for you. First things first, we gotta glue these bad boys together. So we're gonna take our 24 and our 15 and we're gonna be gluing the ends. And uh, just so they stay together while the glue is drying, we're gonna be using clamps on each of the corners. Now we have our four corners clamped and all we have to do is just wait for the wood glue to dry. So we gotta like go for lunch or something. I guess so. Now that our wood glue is dry, uh, we have to put in our ribs. You want to make it look nice and even. Right. So we measure in the same distance from either side. It can be any distance. We'll do eight from this side and we'll do eight from that side. And then just screw them in with our two inch screws. All right. Woo! So frame completed. Frame it all. We got every single shelf. We got two steps left. Yes. The first of which is to stain this. Okay, well let's get our staining gear. We're doing a really nice cherry red. Gordon and I are at an impasse on techniques for staining properly. Mm. I myself am a cotton rag gal. I'm more of a paintbrush guy. And while both techniques are probably great, mine's better, so we're, I'm gonna do a stain <laughs> with a rag, you're gonna stay with a brush, and we're gonna compare. Mm -hmm. Feel free to put in the comments who you think is better. <laughs> Danny, why don't you tell us what are the advantages of using a cloth over a brush? I just find that the cloth actually just absorbs more of the dye, and so and it actually gives me more control when I'm putting it onto the board. Because as you can see, yours is a bit more sloppy, and now you have to go over <laughs> a second, a second coat with a cloth to wipe it down. While I'm actually doing two things at once. That's nice that Danny thinks that. But when you do it with a brush, you put more stain onto the wood. And there, once you leave it, it soaks in a little more and gets a bit more of a deeper color, a more natural look, rather than this slapdash fly-by-night cloth method. Okay, so drop your brush. We need a final judge to come in to figure out who did a better stain job. Mm -hmm. uh, Justin, off camera, would you like to come in and tell us which side do you actually think is nicer looking? I cannot see a difference. Great. Mm. After all that, I think we can agree that both methods are equally as good. Exactly. They honestly, they both look great, but you just need to uh, give yours a bit of a wipe down on your side, so I'm just gonna go ahead and do that. Feel free. All right, so we're back. We have our piece, it is dried. Um, it's a beautiful cherry color. So our next step is to add our hooks. The ones that we wanted only came in this, the silver color, which really didn't match our aesthetic. We spray painted them using a truck bed coating. Which is nice and durable for when you're putting on and off pots. In order to put these things in, you can't just start hand screwing them in. What you need to do is give them a little help by pre-drilling a hole. Basically, I just took the drill bit yep. and then held it over the screw. And if I saw a little bit of edge on either side, that was the right drill bit. Let's flip this. So now we need to do the spots where our pans are gonna hang from. Mm -hmm. Each of these ribs Always. are 12 inches, yes. seeing as we're gonna have three hooks per. Yep. Let's say we do it every three inches. Drilling. Sorry, Danny, I apologize for drilling while you're talking. Sorry, sorry, do it again. Make sure you subscribe to Coral because we have more great projects coming your way. We are going to put on these awesome corner brackets. Oh, I've been so excited for yeah. these. And I just That's love the look of it. Mm, I mean, it just sweet. makes it look so rustic and slick. Okay, so let's screw these in. Okay. After a while, this really starts to burn. You feel it yet? Feel what? 
So now we just have to add our bigger ones? Indeed. On these ones, Danny? Yes. Make sure the opening is pointing out so that when the chains pulling it like that. Perfect. So the last step is our chains. We're going to spray paint these and then it's time to hang this bad boy up. To hang this from the ceiling, we used a stud finder and found a ceiling beam. We drilled directly into the beam with a pilot hole and then hand screwed the eyelets into the beam. And now you have your own DIY hot hanger. It's functional and you use it every day and it's beautiful to look at, it's perfect. Make sure you subscribe because we've got more coil projects coming your way. Bye. See you next time.